but it's a Friday and then uh, let's tell our viewers all around the world how the market is moving at intraday as you can see the numbers in the green as we just mentioned and of course the numbers will keep oscillating until 2.30 when the final numbers will be printed and released by the Nigerian exchange but so far 0.16% is the number and 98,408.31 is the index point at intraday most likely might go higher or lower but the close of the day will determine now for the South Africa Stock Exchange, the JSC, uh, this is how it turned out, 1.36%, very strong there, very firm, 78,595 points, zero points for the JSE on the South African uh, bourse. Let's look at the other two sides of the African market. Up, uh, just a tad, 0.05% increase for Egyptian stock exchange, the EGX30. While Kenya for Thursday, it was very much in the green, 1.30% uh, close for that day. That's it for that market, for the market. Now, we're still talking about Nigeria's uh, financial markets. Um, on this side, this time is the fixed income side of the market. What we saw on Thursday, the Treasury bills market, it was bullish, while the bonds market, it was bearish. And of course, we also had the Naira still sustaining that decline across the three major, the, the three um, um, financial, uh, the three uh, forex markets that we had, foreign exchange markets, where we saw it's declining by 2.7% to about 1,459.70 copper on Thursday on the Nigeria Autonomous Foreign Exchange Market. And for the NAFEX, down 1.15% to 1,419.49 copper, while the BDC rate was down by 0.14% at about uh, 1,435 naira, all the way from 1,433 naira. Now let's get a closer perspective about the fixed income market as well as some other issues within that market. Let's talk to uh, our, our guest here, uh, Demola Oshuntoki, fixed income dealer at Access Bank. Thank you for joining us, Demola. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Okay. So I have about four questions for you, but I think um, time may be, may be on our side. Now I'm starting, first of all, with um, the uh, the activities at the fixed income market, let's just have it just one minute. Can you give us just in a nutshell how uh, what yeah. transpired? So far, we know that the federal government has borrowed about uh, 11 trillion naira within the four months, January to April. So now, what impact is this having uh, from from this borrowing across the treasury bills as well as the bonds markets? Mm -hmm. I'll start by giving an overview of the week. So within the week, we saw the markets opening a credit of about 200 billion. So consequently, uh, we saw the, the, uh, the CBN uh, host a surprise over auction on Monday, where there was about 350 billion uh, that was offered, of which it was undersubscribed by about 200 and shortly over 250 billion. Uh, there was an NTB auction as well this week, uh, where there was about 178 billion uh, offered. This was well oversubscribed, and we saw this uh, close at about 20.70%, so about 26% yield. So, largely, what we can see uh, to relate this to your earlier point of borrowing about, about about 11 trillion is there's been a lot of demand for government securities, uh, especially on the bond side. We can see that there's been a lot of variety which has been offered. So, I'd say, uh, in, in a nutshell, what we've seen is a lot of that demand for government securities has been met, which is why we've seen borrowing at about 11 trillion. Okay, so now that takes me to the other side of the market. Now, mm. the Naira, uh, not just a few weeks ago, we were celebrating that the Naira is gaining across the uh, cross mayor or all of the uh, Forex market. But this time, from the NAFEX, the NAFEM, as well as the BDC, the Naira is uh, going down. So what's driving this renewed and sustained decline, which we've seen uh, since the start of, since, since last week? So what we're seeing is a, is a bit of a supply uh, supply supply issue. So so largely uh, within the past couple of weeks, we've seen uh, less liquidity uh, within the market, and that can be attributed to a number of things. So one can be from the point of view of people taking a number of profits on their positions, and aside from that, what we can see is that it could be through dividend payments, or there will be a lot of other remittances where people are looking to uh, take out those funds. So essentially, those funds are going out of the market, and as a result, uh, there's less liquidity to play with. I do think uh, it's not any cause for concern. Uh, we've seen seen the government be proactive in a number of the incentives to improve this liquidity position. So I do expect that for the next uh, for the next week, uh, by and large, we should still be around the same level of 1,300, 1,400. Uh, but by all indices, uh, we're hoping that we'll be able to end the year um, maybe closer to what uh, Goldman Sachs had forecasted a couple of weeks ago, which was at about 1,200. Hmm. Okay, so now, now my third question will now be, IMF, um, the, we just had a, an IMF a representative uh, on our show uh, just a couple of uh, minutes ago. So now yeah. the IMF is projecting 24% inflation for Nigeria mm -hmm. by the end of the year. 
which is uh, a little bit um, higher than uh, the central bank projecting 21% yeah. and inflation currently at 33.2%. Next week will be yeah. uh, the official release of the April inflation. So now what's your expectation and how is this going to play into, uh, into the market and the economy in, in, in general? I think by and large, we were expecting our inflation numbers to come down considerably within H2. Uh, within H1, we did see a number of proactive measures, especially from the monetary standpoint in terms of increasing rates. So we're in a high uh, inflation environment. However, I do want to note, you know, that a core reason for this high inflation had been, you know, food inflation, uh, which was... Uh, kept at these rates as a result of insecurity, as well as a number of other factors. You know, the government is uh, being proactive in terms of looking to uh, reduce costs, you know, especially for food. And I'm expecting that, you know, within uh, the, the latter part of H2, we'll, continue, we'll start to see, uh, you know, these rates come down considerably. And for next month, I don't know if it will be uh, as aggressive. We're currently at 33%, as you mentioned. Uh, so I, I don't think there will be an aggressive uh, reduction in this point. But what I do expect is towards the back end of the year, we'll start to see uh, the benefits of a number of all these uh, interventions uh, from the government. So, and as a result, we'll see our inflation numbers come down considerably. Mm. Okay, so we'll keep our expectations for that um, mm -hmm. as, as the numbers come out on Wednesday, uh, the official numbers from the National Bureau of Statistics. But thank you so much for your analysis on our show. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.